Welcome back to the Ruby Tuesday. For my last review of 2022, it seems fitting that I'm reviewing a South Korean series based on a webtoon. It's interesting now that everybody's getting into the South Korean series. And what I mean by everybody is the streaming platforms has seen how well they've done on Netflix, getting a wider audience to 240 countries worldwide. Netflix have kind of showcased what we have in K dramas. Disney are doing it. I recently reviewed Connection are from Disney, which was an incredible K-drama that I loved, one of my favorite series of the year, in fact. And now Amazon Prime are doing one called Island. But is it worth your time? Let's jump in and find out. Won Mi Ho's arrogant and selfish attitude causes her father, banishing her to Jeju Island. Unbeknownst to her, the island is where evil roams free. So first things you should know that this is a fantasy K-drama. So there's some things that you're going to have to put off to a side, like believability of characters being able to do certain things. When you have powers or you are a demon, you can do certain things. So there's going to be lots of wire work, people flying at full speed, powers, super strong, that kind of thing. If that's not your cup of tea, then you're not going to enjoy this. But if you've been a part of the Ruby Tuesday for any amount of time, we do animation, world cinema, anime. So this is definitely in my wheelhouse. There are first two episodes on Amazon right now. They're around 45 minutes to 50 minutes a piece. And I have to say, I love this. I thought this was really fun. From the fantasy where our protagonist gets banished to this island, she encounters these demons in... I guess in people and they manifest a physical attributions like spikes coming out of their face, glowy red eyes, they can run really fast, they're super strong, they're called lust demons and there's a whole origin story which is shown through flashbacks with one of our main protagonists that's on the island is able to vanquish them, Van, 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 Van and his story arc is quite dark but then it kind of does a juxtaposition of the story being dark with this light comedy composing moments with light comedy dialogue moments so you have a sort of slapstick humor in amongst the dramedy and that helps elevate the tone that's dark this is quite scary there's a moment just in the first episode where our protagonist is being chased she gets trapped in a truck and it's quite dark and the visual aspects of the monster designs from our demons our last demons are it's pretty spooky it looks pretty realistic in amongst the cg and practical effects they've done a really good job to showcase what they want us to feel in those moments and then of course we get the the kind of love story that I guess is going to start building. We have an origin story for our Van character that's integrated with our modern story. So we have two timelines going on. One in the past dealing with Van and, you know, all about this island and the origin, the prophecy of the one that will save Earth. And then those that are on the island having to deal with the, these last demons and those that know to compare to those that don't know. So there's the fish out of water story that works well with those characters that know what's going on in the island the comedy works well the dialogue works well the actors i think are doing a fantastic job i don't care that much about our characters just yet i care more for the van character because we've had more origin about him i think as episodes go we will maybe care more for our main protagonist i don't mind the acting but i'm not like heavily emotionally engaged with her as a, a character i prefer the side characters at the moment and that has me a little bit worried because there's only six episodes in this adapted from the webtoon. I presume if it gets an audience, we'll get more. But for now, it's just six episodes, which means we're already two episodes in. We have four left. So they're going to have to start building that backstory as well as doing the arc and saving the earth all at the same time. I can see this not ending its story at the end, leaving us on a sort of cliffhanger, kind of standard for this type of series. Give them a bite. Let's see if the audience like it. And then we'll give them another season two or three years long. If I think about some of the Korean dramas that we had short seasons on, on Netflix, and that we still haven't had the second seasons coming out, but we know that they are coming out. Sometimes we have to wait a long time and it almost makes us have to go back and watch the original. Not necessarily a bad thing, but with the amount of Korean drama that is coming out a lot lately, you're going to have to start prioritizing 
which ones you're really going to get into. What is your thing? For me, the fantasy K-drama or horror K-drama, that is my niche, definitely. That's where I tick. I enjoy that. So this did tick a lot of the boxes for me. I thought the acting was fine. I thought the dialogue was good in moments. I thought the score complemented the tone they were going for. I thought it looked like more expensive than their budget that I was expecting the series to have. There's a nice car chase that I thought, oh, that was well done, executed well. So with the budget that they have, which I think is constrained somewhat, they do a very good job. I love the settings, definitely brings you into the zone of adventure and horror at the same time, as well as starting to build those romance stories that the K-dramas are so well known for. I'm there for the lore, I'm there for the fantasy creatures, and the fighting is well done as well. Choreographed, lots of slow motion, but done in a way so you get to see what's happening without it being overdone too much. Slow motion, fast cut, action sequence, slow motion, fast cut, action, action sequence. And this is probably, if you've been watching South Korean dramas for a while, this will be like, okay, yeah, I'm used to this by now. It does everything that you expected. It's not one that I'm saying at the moment is the best I've seen in a long time, but definitely one that you should have on your list. So that's kind of my review of the first two episodes. Let me know, uh, are you going to watch this? Are you going to stick this on your list? Are you going to venture out to maybe the Disney or the Amazon Primes, the Korean dramas? Normally, my go-to place is Netflix because they've housed a lot of it. But it does seem like the other networks are not going, hang on a minute, people are watching this. We need to buy more of their content. And uh, I'm, I'm here for it. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for being a supporter of the Ruby Tuesday over 2022. We do have more reviews coming out in 23, but I will be slowing down my content niching it specifically to the things I've always said that that we niche. So rather than me trying to cover a lot more, I'm going to be doing one or two reviews, but more in depth a week and still do the podcast with Movies and Munchies, the wrap up of what I've seen. So expect more in-depth reviews, more character definitions of what I expected from a particular character, how I feel, all of that. It's going to be coming into it. Thanks so much for watching, but most of all, until next time, remember, live long Tuesday.